Hello and welcome to the SIFT overview. With SIFT, you're able to evaluate hundreds of configurations in minutes. I'll show you how to take advantage of our layout, performance, and financial models all within our powerful cloud architecture. By the end, you'll be able to determine which DCR or pitch, DCAC ratio, module, and racking product produces the best financial return for any ground mount solar project. SIFT is browser-based. There's no need to install any additional software. Just go to sunfig.com SIFT and click sign up. Okay, so I have signed into SIFT and we're gonna skip ahead and I'm just gonna run SIFT and show you what the results look like and then we'll go back and build a project together from the ground up. I'm gonna open this config menu here and you can see that I'm going to ask SIFT to evaluate GCRs between 0.3 and 0.7 and DCAC ratios between one and 1.6. This setup is asking for 357 unique configurations and we're gonna go ahead and click Run SIFT. So this is all being sent to the cloud and the cloud is going to do a layout, performance model, financial model uh, for each of these 357 configurations and then we'll be able to quickly rank them. A little bit of information about this project is it's a single axis tracker with a bifacial module. Uh, we also are going to do an IRR calculation for each of them. So it's complete. Uh, you can see how fast that is and we can quickly sort and identify which options are the best. We can also go over here to this 3D map and you can see on this x-axis we have GCR again between 0.3 and 0.7 and then the DCAC ratio is evaluated building this nice heat map and we can also view that in three dimensions and see which options are winning, um, which are most valuable. From here you can quickly swap modules, you can change costs, you can change boundaries and continue to run SIFT and identify which projects, which products, and which configurations are gonna be most valuable for your team. We need to define our project boundary. So I'm gonna import a KMZ directly into SIFT by dragging and dropping it into the map. SIFT is gonna pull all the polygons in, but SIFT doesn't know what those polygons are. So for example, if I select this polygon, I need to tell it that this is a buildable area or a boundary by clicking the hotkey B. And this area I want to not build in, so I'm going to set it as an exclusion. Uh, you can also click the links at the bottom of the map, for example, exclusion or hotkey E. Click that, and that'll mark it as an exclusion. Also, you can draw additional polygons if you want. You don't have to start with a KMZ. You can draw everything freehand. I'm going to de delete that one. Uh, you can also search project site locations by address or latitude, longitude up here. I'm going to skip ahead, define all these polygons, and then move on to the inputs. Okay, I have all the polygons defined. One more thing I wanted to point out is if you're having trouble selecting a polygon, for example, this small lake here is underneath this other polygon. This just happens because of the way some KMZs are built. I can right click and I'll get a menu with every polygon underneath my right click. So for example, this one, and then the one above it, uh, I can select that one and then set it. So just use that little tip if you're having trouble selecting polygons when you import a KMZ. I'm gonna start with the products tab. We have module, inverter, and racking. If you open up the module tab, uh, you'll see you can import a pan file. We also have a number of generic modules in here. If you don't have a pan file or you're just experimenting with SIFT for the first time, just click on that and navigate to one of these generic modules. But I do recommend you import a specific module. You can import via pan file. I'm just dragging and dropping a pan file now into SIFT, and I'm gonna click Import, and all those specifications are pulled in. You can review them, modify them, and you can also save this module to your individual database. That way you can use it on future projects without having to import the pan file again. Inverter works in the same way. There are a number of generic inverters in there, or you can import from an OND file. I have an OND file. I'm dragging and dropping it, clicking Import, and all those parameters are into SIFT and you can again rename it, save it, uh, and use it on your future projects. In racking, SIFT supports single axis tracker, ground fixed tilt, and east west fixed. To begin, I'll start out with a generic 28 module per string single axis tracker, but I want to make a few edits to the dimensions. Maybe my module is a little bit larger, so I want to set the x dimension of my trackers to 2.1, uh, and I might want to refine these y dimensions according to your specific tracker and the module counts on those trackers. For this project, I'm going to keep active 
type A, meaning this largest tracker, in this case a three string, and type B, a two string, and I'm gonna disable this, which is the one string tracker. You can do this depending on the, you know, the size of your site or what kind of trackers you wanna to, want to put in. Of course, you can just do a single tracker size, uh, but I'll keep it like that for now. If you wanna look into additional information or, or you wanna read up on some of these other inputs, you can click the help menu and navigate to the racking section. For now, I'm gonna move on to performance. In the performance tab, we have weather and performance inputs. I'll start with weather. You'll see a pin drops on the map and you can move that around to define the latitude, longitude, elevation, or you can input these manually. You can download weather directly from NASA Power and NSRDB. When you're in SIFT, you might see other data sources available. Or if you wanna import your own custom weather data or weather data that you've purchased elsewhere, you can click import and drag and drop a TMY or uh, standard format CSV directly in. If you have some problem importing a CSV, download this template. The template has some instructions and will help you get your weather file into SIFT uh, no matter what. So I'm gonna click import there and import my custom weather data. And I can view the weather summary data here, just verifying that it's correct. Uh, you can also download the data uh, as you know 8760 with that button. From here, I'm gonna to go to performance. Performance variables are identical to those that you'd see in PVSYST. So if you're familiar, you have a PVSYST printout for what your team likes to do on losses at a given site or location, um, you can use that. I won't go through all of these now. I do wanna indicate that we do have monthly values. So if you have monthly soiling or monthly albedo information, you can input that there. Also, if you have a, a standard performance setup, you can uh, name that and save it and use it on all future projects. Going into finance, finance is optional. If you don't have finance turned on, you'll get capacity calculations, generation potentials, but you won't get an LCOE or an IRR. You can turn that on if you're interested and select LCOE or IRR. I'll go through this quickly and I refer you to the help menu uh, that gets into the details about how all these are calculated or different components of the project that are typically in different buckets the analysis period, discount rate, uh, and then the install costs are everything that's being spent upfront year zero. So the dollar per watt for your module, um, anything else that's scaling with DC. So things like your trackers, some of the wiring uh, would go into the other DC bucket here. Then we have everything that's scaling with each inverter. So we have the inverters themselves, maybe transformers, foundations, uh, items like that. And then the fixed costs, anything that we're spending upfront, Operating costs are typically held as a dollar per kilowatt. Here we have it listed as $10. We also have an option for you to input an operating cost for AC if that's applicable and any fixed costs that you have each uh, year and then how those are escalated. You can go and open up a custom schedule if you wanna get um, deeper and wanna do things like inverter replacement schedules and costs. Uh, that would go into the custom schedule. IRR is very similar with a lot of fields. So I'll just skip to the IRR specific ones. For IRR, you can do revenue by some fixed rate that can escalate. Uh, you can also do a time of use and input time of use data as a 12 by 24. You can include the ITC. We have different debt structures available, so no debt, fixed percent, or DSCR, and then a number of depreciation classes here that you can set. Again, like everything else, if you have a financial system built that you want to use on future projects or use as a template, just come up here, name it, save it, and you'll be able to refer to that uh, on future projects. Finally, we have the Site tab with Layout and Topography menus. I'm going to open up Layout. From here, you can set point of interconnect or grid power limits to further constrain your site by toggling that on and importing the kilowatt AC limit. You can also fix the inverter quantity. So if you only want a specific number of inverters, a specific AC nameplate, you would turn this on uh, and tell SIFT how many inverters you want. Just below it, it'll have a readout uh, based on your in inverter input of what that megawatt AC is. So all your results will have only that megawatt AC. We have the option to do an aligned layout or an unaligned layout. 
unaligned layouts are more common on smaller sites, aligned more common on larger. You can set the azimuth in SIFT, 180 is south, zero is north. You can define uh, your roads here, and you can decide whether you want to draw the inverters in the layout or not. Um, there are some advanced parameters in here, like layout coordinate system, and you can learn more about that in help. But that'll allow you to do things like export these to a state plane or export the data to CAD and feet. Moving on to topography, you can import topography from USGS if you're in the continental United States or Google anywhere in the world. Both of these are roughly 10 meter resolution data sets. SIFT will automatically request the topography for your site based on your boundaries. So it's going to build a box around everything that's red effectively, uh, pull all the elevation data, and it'll also generate slope analyses. So these different inputs, result in slope, limit in this case 15, north south slope, east west slope, these slope analyses will be generated in parallel with the elevation request. When topography is finished loading, you'll get a few new map controls on the right, and you should see the result in slope. So this just means that everywhere that the slope is above 15%, uh, we're gonna mark that in gray. That scale is based on the input earlier of 15%, so you can adjust that depending on your, your needs. If we look at north-south slope, because we're gonna do a single axis tracker or evaluate a single axis tracker on this site, we can switch over to the north-south slope analysis. And in this case, we wanted to mark everything that was above 8% as out of the limit or gray. We can also see which, are, which slopes are facing north, which slopes are facing south, and begin to learn or understand a little bit more about this site and, and what may or may not be possible. If you want to mark out an area that is not going to be valuable to your site or you don't want to grade it, you can then go in and add an additional, say, an exclusion area right there for, for this particular product. It's almost time to run SIFT. I'm going to open up this config menu and refine my final configuration parameters. I have a GCR 0.35 to 0.44. I'll up that to 0.45 at a 0.01 step, giving me 11 total. You can also adjust this to pitch if you prefer that definition. And then strings per inverter are used to define the DCACs that we're evaluating, in this case, 336 to 459 uh, at a step of six, so 22 total. These two values multiplied give us 242, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Run. Skipped ahead a few seconds because you've already seen SIFT run. Again, we can sort by IRR, identify which are most valuable. Um, we can open up individual configurations. When we open up the tab, the map will replot, and we have some summary information about this particular configuration. We can also export a report, which has things like all the 8760 information, uh, more details about the configuration. You can export this layout to CAD. You can also export it to KMZ. In the main results window, where we have these few hundred different results, there are a couple of variables up here to help you sort and search. But if you download to CSV, you'll get a lot more information. Uh, this is an Excel sheet, so it's difficult to look at in video. But you can see that we have all of the same information, like yield. Uh, but we also have additional information, like string quantity, all the performance data, over here, as well as operating costs, yearly generation, arrays, uh, and so on. Okay, that's the end of the basic SIFT tutorial. I wanted to point out a few final things. First is the help menu. You can open that up, and if you have questions, for example, of the map, map controls, hotkeys, that's all in here. Any of the other menus are fully described and explained. We have a full collaboration component, so you can collaborate with team members, send notes back and forth, work on projects together. If you do run into any problems with SIFT, please use the bug report button. This will send a copy of your project to the development team so we can quickly address any issues that you may have. All of the account information, SIFT costs, are in the account menu, again at the bottom left. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck on your projects. Again, you can sign up for SIFT for free at sunfig.com. 
slash sift. <laughs>